Hello, people of God. Hope you're all well. We're just moments away from starting the closing liturgy of the 2019 Los Angeles Religious Education Congress. What a journey it's been. Thank you for your loyalty and watching the live uh, streams. Hopefully they have been helpful to your prayer, to your journey these past three days, that we have been inspired, galvanized with this very potent theme, thirsting for justice, sed de justicia. You know, we started Friday on a very strong note with a great opening ceremony. There was dance, there was music, there was reflection, testimony, the word of God. So why don't we take a look at some highlights from our opening ceremony? He looked at his sun and he looked at his moon and he looked at his little stars. He looked on his world with all its living things. And God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think by a deep, wide river. He sat down with his head in his hands. God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay, and by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there, the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand. And that was definitely quite a way to start this 2019 Los Angeles Religious Education Congress. We moved on then to Saturday when we really did a deep delve into the topic, into this theme of thirsting for justice, sed de justicia. And one way that was very powerful is to get the people of God to acknowledge the dignity of work and how we contribute so meaningfully to God's creation. And the assembly gathered that morning to the basic moral test that is inscribed in Matthew 25. Let's see how they participated. We thirst for the sacredness of each person to be valued because we believe that every person is precious that people are more important than things, and that the measure of every institution is whether it threatens or enhances the life and dignity of every human person. We thirst for justice. justice. We thirst for each person to grow and thrive through participation in family and community. We believe people have a right and a duty to participate in society, seeking together the common good and well-being of all, especially the poor and vulnerable. We thirst for justice. justice. We th There's nothing more amazing than seeing the people of God in body and spirit come together to reflect on the theme. And, you know, after that whole exercise, we had a very powerful talk, a powerful keynote speech by Sister Kathy Bryant from the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And she talked about Jesus and the uh, Samaritan woman and the transformative power of the Beatitudes. Let's listen to her give that powerful keynote speech on Saturday morning. Where does this Congress theme, Thirsting for Justice, come from? Well, you just heard the story, the encounter between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus recognized her thirst for truth. And we are all sharing in that thirst for truth, the truth about who God is and who we are. This theme also comes from the words of Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for righteousness, found in the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are powerful. 
And you know, in religious ed, we memorize the Ten Commandments and the rules of the church. But now more than ever, every Catholic needs to know the Beatitudes and to their transformative power in the world. You know, one of the if things that really captivates everyone that comes to Congress is the richness and the diversity of our liturgies. And this year was no exception to the beauty and the uh, dynamic power of the people of God coming together for the Eucharistic um, celebration. And so we had two great liturgies here in the arena. One was on Friday night where the theme was the sanctification of human labor presided by uh, Bishop John Stowe, who is from the Appalachians, and he had a very powerful testimony. And then on Saturday, we really um, celebrated the ancestral power and heritage of faith in the black perspective. And we were joined by Bishop Sherry, who is Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of New Orleans, and very rich music provided by Roger Holland and his music ministers. So let's take a look at our beautiful, beautiful liturgies. anything more uplifting than when you watch a music minister minister to the assembly of God in such a powerful way. And, you know, I'm joined by my brother Joe Melendres, up, who Alex? was joining us this year, as, as you do every year, as a host yeah. for Youth Day, where more than 11,000 youth from all over Southern California joined us for an amazing Incredible. day. Joe, can Incredible. you talk about what you experienced? Well, as a, as a Catholic school teacher, I was inviting the entire campus to come. There were literally the hundreds of kids from different schools, like full on, like not just 30 kids, but like 100 kids would come from one school. They're going to different workshops. Um, we had a keynote from Father Mike Schmitz. The theme this year was trust God's got you. So I want people to grow deeper in trusting God. A lot of times we're like, well, where are we being led? What should I do with my life? What's the journey going to be? Well, we got to trust in God's will, and that was to grow in that trust. So incredible time. And, of course, we celebrate Eucharist um, over, as you said, over 11,000 teens coming together, praising Jesus, Jesus chants, all kinds of amazing stuff. I know, and I think we were very impressed this year with, you know, the amount of participation. Totally. And there were a lot of young women that were here that were present, yes. giving God's testimony. Yes. So why don't we take a look at what the highlights of Youth Day present for themselves. Let's check it out. Are you ready, Ethan? I'm ready to go. All right. Hi, what's your name, and what parish are you from? Uh, I'm Andre Cabello. I'm from Sacred Heart Church. That's so cool. Where's Sacred Heart Church at? Are you guys here? 
I think they're over there, Andre. Have you ever been an altar server before? Um, actually, yes, I have. That's so cool. Is anyone in your family a priest or not? Uh, not that I know of. Oh, all right, Ethan. I think we're ready for you. All right. Hi, what's your name and what parish are you from? My name is Kelly Carney and I'm from St. Bede's Parish. St. Bede's Parish, where are you guys at? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Just be like that. All right. Have you ever been to the Vatican? Yes, I have been to the Vatican. That's so awesome. Uh, have you ever considered a vocation as a woman religious? No, I have not. Perfect. Maddie, we're ready. Perfect. Young church, Mass is a beautiful time to be in the true presence of Jesus. The ritual of the liturgy makes it easy, all of us, even strangers, to come together and be together as one body of Christ. Today we're going to have a fun time challenging Andre and Kelly here to see if they and the rest of us know some of the more obscure objects we use at Mass. Uh, Andre, a quick word of advice. Trust. God's got you. Let's get started. Andre, can you please point to me which one the crozier is? Uh, I'm gonna go with B. Andre, I'm so sorry. That, unfortunately, is not the correct answer. Let's see if Kelly knows the answer. Kelly, what do you think? What do you think the crozier is? Is it A? Unfortunately, no, that is not the right answer. Oh, you say! Do you guys think you know the answer? Yeah? On the count of three, I'm going to tell you to scream the letter that you think it is. One, two, three. Okay, all right. Kelly, based off on these amazing responses, what do you think a crozier is? From what I heard, I'm going to guess D. Congratulations, Kelly. You got it right. Round of applause. atmosphere is changing now, but the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around, that the Spirit of the presence of the young church and how active and how spirit-filled they are. And you know, one thing about Congress is it brings together worldwide experts in Catholic theology and even Catholic journalism. And a lot of you know John Allen Jr. He's been, you know, seminal in um, great Catholic reporting over the years, balanced reporting. And this year um, he gave a, a talk and he had a moment where he opened himself up for very personal questions. And we want to share this special moment where he really opened up about why he's still a member of the Catholic Church and why he holds his faith steadfast. So if any of you have been wondering what to say to people in the midst of these vicissitudes of this tribulation for the church, pay close attention because this is a perfect take home for you, uh, a jewel in the making. Let's listen to John Allen Jr. from Crux Now. Okay, so the question is, uh, given everything that we have been spending the last hour and 20 minutes talking about, why in God's name would anyone join the Catholic Church? Well, 
Look, uh, you know, first of all, I'm a journalist. I'm not a theologian or a pastor. And if you were getting your spiritual guidance from a journalist, you people are in far worse shape than I thought. <laughs> so I'm not really sure I'm the guy to answer this question. So let me, let me repackage it in a way I can't answer. Well, I, I know the ins and outs of this like you cannot believe. I, you know, I have listened to victims' testimony for, steadily for the last 17 years. I think it is probably fair to say that I have seen the Catholic Church at its level worst more than most people. And so the question is, why haven't I left? Well, here's the thing. Um, some of you may have heard me tell this story a few years ago when I did a talk on anti-Christian persecution, but in the year 2000, I covered John Paul II's uh, trip to Ukraine. And I met a young woman whose grandfather had been a Greek Catholic priest, one of the Eastern churches in communion with Rome, who had been arrested under the Soviets and crucified upside down on a prison wall for the crime of refusing to recant his loyalty to the Pope. And this young woman was at John Paul's mass in Ukraine, just bawling her eyes out. And when I asked her why, she said, because I am imagining what must be in my grandfather's heart today, staring down from heaven and seeing the Holy Father stand on Ukrainian soil. Now, the reason that story gets me, I grew up in rural western Kansas, okay, in the 1970s and 80s, okay? I never experienced anything vaguely remotely close to religious persecution. Okay, I mean, the closest I ever got was eating fish sticks and mac and cheese on Fridays during Lent. Okay, um, what that story, and so many more like it that I have heard over the years, what it reminds me is that there is something so precious about this faith. Beyond all of the scandal and crisis and, and meltdown and heartache and controversy, there is something so precious about it that ordinary people who have no aspirations to heroism, no lust to be martyrs, ordinary people will pay in blood rather than let it go. And it's forced me to think about what is that something so precious uh, about the faith for me. And, and the conclusion, I, and this is, listen, this is just mine. I, don't, I pass judgment on no one. But my conclusion, and I'm also the world's most imperfect Catholic, okay? I mean, let me be 100% clear that when we talk about practicing Catholics, I'm the guy who needs the practice, okay? Uh, but uh, what, my, what my experience over the years has forced me to do is ask, what is my faith really in? And ultimately, my faith is in the Christ who became incarnate for our sake, who suffered and died for our sins, who rose again and is in heaven awaiting final judgment. And I believe that this is the community he called into being because it's a community of human beings. It is a mixture of shadows and light. It has always been thus and ever shall be. Well, there you have it, people of God. It was definitely a smorgasbord of spiritual elation these three days. Thank you so much for being with us, for participating wherever you may be, your home or, you know, traveling from one place to another. My name is Alex Venegas. Um, I've been your host. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you next year, February 20th for Youth Day and then February 21st through 23rd, 2020 for RE Congress 2020. We're about to start the closing liturgy here. Please stay with us. Archbishop Jose Gomez is presiding, and John Flaherty leads this amazing group of musicians for the closing liturgy. God bless. la paz dame tu paz Señor dame tu paz solo en ti Señor se encuentra la Libérame de todos mis temores.
temores Libérame de mis preocupaciones Libérame, libérame tu Señor Dame tu paz, Señor. Dame tu paz. Solo en ti, Señor, se encuentra la Sáname de todas mis heridas Sana el dolor de mis caídas Sáname, oh, sáname tu
a stranger in this land. All who need, all who need a helping hand. All who need, the homeless on the street, no place to eat or sleep. Here all will find bread. Oh 
Sisters, peace be with you. We gather this afternoon for this special celebration of uh, our uh, of the Eucharist on this uh, third Sunday of Lent, and uh, we especially give thanks to God for all the graces that we have received this week at our Religious Education Congress, and ask for the grace to continue our commitment for the renewal of each one of us personally and renewal of the Church. So let's start a celebration, acknowledging our sins and preparing ourselves to celebrate the second mysteries. Yo confieso ante Dios Todopoderoso. Dios Todopoderoso tenga misericordia de nosotros, perdone nuestros pecados y nos lleve a la vida eterna. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lectura del Libro del Éxodo En aquellos días, el pueblo, torturado por la sed, fue a protestar contra Moisés, diciéndole Nos has hecho salir de Egipto para hacernos morir de sed a nosotros, a nuestros hijos y a nuestro ganado Moisés clamó al Señor y le dijo, ¿Qué puedo hacer con este pueblo? Solo falta 
que me apedreen. Respondió el Señor a Moisés, preséntate al pueblo, llevando contigo a alguno de los ancianos de Israel, toma en tu mano el callado con que golpeaste el nilo y vete. Yo estaré ante ti, sobre la peña, en Oreb. Golpea la peña y saldrá de ella agua para que beba el pueblo. Así lo hizo Moisés a la vista de los ancianos de Israel y puso por nombre a aquel lugar Masá y Meribá. Por la rebelión de los hijos de Israel y porque había tentado al Señor Diciendo, ¿está o no está el Señor en medio de nosotros? Palabra de Dios.
Lời Chúa trích thư Thánh Phaolô Tông Đồ gửi tín hữu Roma. Anh chị em thân mến, khi được đức tin công chính hóa, chúng ta được hòa thuận với Chúa nhờ Đức Giêsu Kitô, Chúa chúng ta. Đấng cho chúng ta nhờ đức tin mà tiến đến ân sủng, đứng vững ở đó và được hiển vinh trong niềm hy vọng vinh quang của con cái Chúa. Nhưng kẻ trông không làm hổ thẹn, vì lòng mến Chúa đổ vào lòng chúng ta nhờ Thánh Thần là đấng đã được ban cho chúng ta. Ngay từ khi chúng ta còn yếu hèn, Chúa Kitô theo kỳ hẹn mà chịu chết, vì chúng ta là kẻ tội lỗi. Ít có ai chết thay cho người công chính. Họa chăng mới có người dám chết vì kẻ lành. Nhưng Thiên Chúa chứng tỏ tình yêu của người đối với chúng ta. Nghĩa là trong lúc chúng ta còn là tội nhân, thì theo kỳ hẹn, Chúa Kitô đã chết vì chúng ta. The word of the Lord. See you guys. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. If you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink. For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said, 
If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and this cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern, and drink from it himself with his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right by saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because the salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, must worship in spirit, in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, What are you looking for? Or, Why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look at 
and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here, the saying is verified that one who sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. ban cho con nước hằng sông để con không còn khát nữa praise to you lord jesus christ praise to you lord jesus christ praise to you lord praise to you and sisters in Christ. So, once again, we are coming to the end of another Religious Education Congress. It has been a beautiful weekend, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that uh, it's been uh, just a few days of, uh, as I was saying before, growing personally in our own uh, uh, spirituality and in our desire to uh, become missionary disciples and going out and share with everybody the beautiful truth of our faith. I think it's also wonderful for us to gather in this holy season of Lent. As we are seeking these days to purify ourselves through this time of intense devotion to prayer and self-denial, and the words of mercy. And today is a very special day, as we all know. On this day, 39 years ago, St. Oscar Romero was martyred as he celebrated the Holy Eucharist. It is today uh, his feast day, 
now that he is San Oscar Romero. Tuve la alegría de estar en Roma en octubre pasado y con celebrar la misa de canonización de San Oscar Romero. Seguro que algunos de ustedes estuvieron ahí también. Un hermoso momento para la Iglesia Universal. And as we know, he was a bishop who thirst for justice and peace for his people. So we especially want to pray for his intercession as we today continue to reflect on the theme of this Congress, thirsting for justice. Sinoska Romero used to say that every injustice begins in the human heart. So when we thirst for justice, we are thirsting to get right with God. We are thirsting for holiness, for love and mercy, for a society that reflects God's beautiful intentions for creation. And as we heard in our gospel today, Jesus is also thirsting for justice. The beautiful story that we heard about the woman at the well is an ancient catechesis on baptism. It begins with a touching portrait of the humanity of Jesus. He's tired from his journey and thirsty. In the hot sun, at noon, he sits down at the well, and he asks the woman of Samaria, give me a drink. Jesus is thirsty, but he's not thirsty for water. He's thirsting for this woman's faith. He knows that the Samaritan woman is looking for something more, for transcendence. In her life, she keeps going back to this same well. But, she, but, but still, she cannot satisfy her thirst. Still, she cannot find what she's really looking for, which is true love, true happiness. And my dear brothers and sisters, we need to understand that this woman that Jesus meets at the well. She is you and she is me. In this holy season of Lent, Jesus once again is coming to meet all of us at the well of our human desire. Jesus makes himself thirsty in order to show us how much we are thirsting for him, how much we are looking for the living God. Jesús está invitando a la Samaritana y a cada uno de nosotros a tener un diálogo que nos llevará a la conversión continua, a la salvación. Quiere que una vez más se remuevan las aguas del bautismo que recibimos hace ya tantos años. Jesús le dice a la, a la Samaritana y nos lo recuerda también a nosotros que el bautismo es un regalo de Dios para todos los que creen en Él. El bautismo es nuestra salvación, el agua viva que nos hace hijos e hijas de Dios. Y hace posible que adoremos a Dios nuestro Señor en espíritu y de verdad. My dear brothers and sisters, we should be so grateful for our baptism. Pope Francis always uh, asks us to the question, do you remember the day of your baptism? I mean, not do you remember, do you know the, because we were babies. So, do you know the day of your baptism? Uh, now I know that I was baptized on January the 5th. So, I'm okay. I don't know if you know the day of your baptism, but check it out. So 
So we should be so grateful for our baptism. The Lord has given us to drink from this river, river of living water that flows from his sacred heart. He has satisfied the deep thirst of our souls, the deep longing that we have to know God's love. As St. Paul says today in the second reading of our Mass, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And now, Jesus is sending us, sending us out into this world to finish his work, to bring this beautiful gift of salvation to the men and women of our times. Our baptism gives us a beautiful mission, a great responsibility. And I think this weekend has been a special time for all of us to reflect on that beautiful gift that we have received. This is what we see with the woman at the well. She leaves behind her water jar and she goes back to the town to tell her people to come and see, to come and meet Jesus. You know, it's interesting to hear what St. Oscar Romero said about this passage of the Gospel. He said, The Samaritan woman has become an apostle. And like an apostle, she attracts many people to Christ. And like he said, we could call this final scene the hour of the church. It is no longer Christ himself who preaches. Rather, he preaches to the Samaritan woman. He preaches to all those who come to believe in him. My brothers and sisters, now, we are living again this hour of the church. As we all know, this has been a hard year for the church. A moment of reckoning in which many painful truths have been revealed. But we need to live with hope in Jesus Christ. He will never abandon us. Jesus is calling each one of us today, just as he calls the Samaritan woman. He's calling us back to the well, to renew ourselves in the living waters of his spirit. The reform of the church requires that each one of us, everyone, clergy, religious, lay people, all of us, renew our baptismal commitment to holiness, to, uh, to being missionary disciples, just like the Samaritan woman. Jesus is still, is still seeking souls. But now, he does that through you and through me. He sends us out into this de desert of this world of secularization and globalization. This world of machines uh, uh, and, and electronics and material promises of happiness. Jesús quiere que seamos discípulos misioneros en nuestro tiempo. Y nuestros contemporáneos son como los israelitas en el desierto en la primera lectura de la misa que acabamos, la primera lectura que acabamos de escuchar en la misa de hoy. Cuando tienen sed, no sienten la presencia ni el amor de Dios. Y la misma pregunta que los israelitas hacen es la misma que nuestros contemporáneos nos están haciendo. ¿Está o no está el Señor en medio de nosotros? Ese es el reto que tenemos en la sociedad secularizada en la que vivimos. Nuestra misión es mostrarles que sí, que Dios está entre nosotros, en medio de nosotros todo el tiempo. This is our mission. Each one of us needs to be the Samaritan woman in our time and place. We need to help our neighbors to know that the Lord is near. We need to help our neighbors to know that he loves us and that he has died for us and he has a beautiful plan for our lives. So today, 
as we ask for this special grace to really be the church, the people of God. Today I want to share with you, as we ask for this grace to renew our missionary seal, this words of Pope Francis in the homily of canonization mass of St. Oscar Romero, words that are helping me personally. The Pope said, Jesus is radical. He gives all, and he asks all. He gives a love that is total, and he asks for an undivided heart. And then the Pope went, uh, 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 continued to say, we cannot give him, who offers us eternal life, some odd moment of time. Jesus is not content with a percentage of love. We cannot love him 20 or 50 or 60 percent. It's either all or nothing. So, my brothers and sisters, let us stay thirsty for justice. Let us keep thirsting to bring others to open their hearts to hear his voice and to know his love. Let us be apostles who attract many people to Christ. Let us thirst as Jesus thirst for the salvation of every soul. And may our blessed Mother Mary intercede for us. May she help us to meet the challenges of our time with hope and generous spirit that all may drink deeply from the living waters that wells up to eternal life. And St. Oscar Romero, pray for us. Ruega por nosotros. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I now, I now invite the elect who will be baptized this sister to come forward with their godparents. parents. And now, all the baptized, please stand. Let us bow our heads and pray for these members of the elect, that they may be given a spirit of true repentance, that they may discover God's promise of justice in the living waters for which they thirst. Let to God kneel down and pray.
Let us pray for these elect whom God has chosen. May the grace of the sacraments bring them from the parched desert into the living waters of Christ. Upon the parched lands Của sự thù hằn Và e sợ khác mọi kiều Of violence and retribution De crueles desigualdades Y divisiones fragiles Pour out your living waters, O Lord Upon our dry and hardened hearts, đầy những lời thâm độc và cam giận, full of bitter jealousies and nurtured wounds, llena de rencores obstinados y rechazo del perdón. Pour out your living waters, O Lord. From the cold and jagged rock, của phán đoán cứng nhắc và háo thắng, of abuse of power and abuse of persons, de la indiferencia al sufrimiento y al cruel interés propio, bring forth your living waters, O Lord. Upon the death-dealing places of our planet, đất đai khô cằn đi bởi sự bóc lột mẹ trái đất, poisoned seas and flooded islands, desiertos and expansion, y criaturas hambrientas. Pour out your living waters, O Lord. Into our arid souls. Bị sao lãng khỏi vòng tay yêu thương của Ngài. Hiding from your call to bring mercy to the forgotten. Anhelando la comodidad y el éxito terrenal. Pour out your living waters, O Lord. All-powerful Father, through your Son, you revealed your mercy to the woman of Samaria. And moved by the same care, you have offered salvation to all sinners. Look favorably on these elect, who decide to become your adopted children through the power 
or your sacraments. Free them from this slavery of sin and for Satan's crushing yoke. Exchange the gentle yoke of Jesus. Protect them in every danger that they may serve you faithfully in peace and joy and render you thanks forever. Amen. Now, people of God, stretch out your hands over this elect and pray. Lord Jesus, in your merciful wisdom, you touched the heart of this sinful woman and taught her to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, by your power, free this elect from the cunning of Satan as they draw near to the fountain of living water. Touch their hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit that they may come to know the Father in true faith, which expresses itself in love, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear elect, please stand. I also invite four unbaptized catechumens who will continue the journey into the catechumenate throughout the next year. My dear elect and catechumens, the church gathered here now stands you forward to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God, which you have shared with us today. We send you with our blessing and love, and look forward with eager joy to that day when your thirst for justice will be quenched in the font of living water and you will then join us around the table of the Eucharist. Go in peace.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Thank you. Hoy celebramos al arzobispo y santo Oscar Romero de El Salvador, quien también tuvo sed de justicia, dando su vida por el Evangelio. En nuestra misa de hoy tenemos invitados especial de la comunidad salvadoreña, quienes van a presentar las ofrendas y preparar el altar. Chúa cao vời biết bao, nào con biết đáp đền thế. 
nào để cho cần xưng chúa ơi để cho cần xưng chúa ơi and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is true, right, and just, our dear, and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when He asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, He had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did He thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hope. in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 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 You are in the Holy Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, this is, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them that they do fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord. Until you come, until you come, until you come again. Until you come.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, the Bishop of this Diocese, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden, hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Did you all have a great weekend? ¿Cómo fue tu experiencia de congreso? Gracias por entrar en el, en el misterio de su dedicación y participación. Ustedes dan mucho a su ministerio. Muchísimas gracias por todo su amor. So thank you all for your participation in Religious Education Congress 2019. Woohoo! Quiero también reconocer a los miembros de la comunidad saborodeña en este día muy especial para la comunidad en celebrar esta festividad de San Oscar Romero. I'd like to thank uh, Archbishop Gomez for shepherding us through this whole weekend. So thank you so much. And to Bishop Van for celebrating earlier today. Thank you. For our wonderful Youth Day, I'd like to thank uh, Victoria and Katie and Kelly and Neda from our office here, as well as the Youth Day coordinating team. So thank you so much. And now for our committees, our liturgy committee, our registration committee, the front lines of the battle, right? Uh, our Congress committee, our Blue Angels, the Yellow Jackets, and the volunteers in all of our areas. Thank you so much for all of your hard work this whole year. <laughs> to our wonderful speakers and our exhibitors, thank you for sharing your gifts and all of your resources. Thank you. And this wonderful environment, yes, uh, Linda Reem, uh, Valerie McRae, and Joseph Shepard, thank you for uh, decorating our space and making it feel like a place of home. <clears throat> for our production, we would like to thank Janelle Friedrichsen and Maria Aldorete. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Our sound crew, Drew Aldridge and the audio tech crew, thank you. For our, uh, for, we'd like to thank Bright Ideas, John Vasquez and his crew for the lighting and video, so thank you. For our live streaming, it's Dan House and his team, all back in, in uh, Transmission Village in the back. You don't see them, but they, everybody who's online sees them, so thank you. For our sacristy team, uh, Brian Custer and his team of sacristans, our MCs, especially Marianne Nguyen and Jonas Bognar, our head uh, MCs, thank you so much for guiding us through our liturgies. And then something very special, and it's always been something important for me in my heart. Um, the, uh, all of the hosts that we uh, used during our liturgies, they were counted out uh, specifically by young men from our Ventura County Correctional Facility. They counted nearly 30,000 hosts for our use during this weekend. So please pray for them. And thank you, Katya, for helping arrange that. Katya Cunha. I'd like to thank the students from LMU and Mount St. Mary for all of their work and helping, so thank you. <clears throat> for all the priests, Brother Priest, thank you for your presence here throughout this weekend, and especially this evening. The deacons and their wives for your ministry and service, thank you. For all of our bishops, those who are here present in our liturgy and all throughout the weekend, so thank you. For our ministers of the liturgical movement, thank you for enhancing our prayer this weekend. <laughs> to 
to all of our liturgy coordinators, and especially Elizabeth Mullen and Margaret Traxler, who are our day coordinators, for helping kind of put all of our liturgies together and make sure that they ran smoothly. Thank you so much. We acknowledge and appreciate the very inspiring and dedicated and visual work of our team of volunteer interpreters for the deaf and hard of hearing for those participants. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Very good. Uh, we'd like to thank Jeannie Cotter and her publisher, GIA, for our theme song this year. Thank you so much for the hard work there. Our cantors, Anna Betancourt and Paul Nguyen, thank you for your wonderful gifts. Thank you. For Ed Archer, who directed music for Youth Day, Mary Janice, who helped coordinate musicians here for our liturgies this weekend, and for John Flaherty, the chair of the liturgy committee and director of music for our liturgies, thank you all for your wonderful, wonderful hard work. Thank you. For our media relations department, uh, headed by Carolina Guevara and all of her team, and for the digital media team, Sarah Yaklik and her, all of her team, thank you so much for helping us get out to the world through transmission and social, social media. Whew, thank you. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, for my wonderful and amazing staff, would you please stand? I want to thank you for all of your participation, your contribution, especially for Paulette and Jan and for Natalie and Joanna, and for Chris Kraus, uh, those who worked so hard on our Congress team. So I want you to stand up. Come on up. And then all the staff, please stand. This is your ORE staff, so thank you so much. And to all of you, I want to thank you for taking this time to be with us. Some of you have families and homes, and you work, and all sorts of things to come here and you are here for this whole weekend, I hope it was uh, an experience, an encounter of grace with Christ, and that you go forth from this place filled with joy and ready to be agents of justice. Ojalá que este fin de semana ha sido una experiencia, un encuentro con las aguas vivas de Jesús, y ya están listos a salir como agentes de justicia y paz en su comunidad. So I hope, thank you so much for all of you for your participation and your support of our weekend. Now, the little surprise. Anybody wants to know the theme for next year's Adult Days? Do you? ¿Quieren, quieren saber el tema para este, el, el siguiente congreso? Sí? All right, so I am proud to announce to you our theme for the Adult Days of Religious Ed Congress 2020 is Live Mercy, Be Holy. Vive la misericordia y la santidad. May God continue to bless you, especially as you travel home. And may God continue to renew and strengthen you in your ministry. We'll see you all here next year. <laughs> uh, I also want to thank Father Chris Vaisurus for his leadership in the Office of Religious Education of the Arts. Father Chris, thank you very much. All right, next Congress is February 21st to 23rd, 2020. Are you coming? All right, we all are coming. Great. So, huh? Ah. Father Chris wants all of you to bring a friend. Is that a deal? All right. Now we have to end Congress. Do you want to do it or do you want to stay here? I think you have to go home. So I want to myself thank all of you for coming to uh, Congress 2019 and I hope... Uh, 
It's been a wonderful uh, time of, uh, as I said, growing in our personal and spiritual life and our commitment to uh, share the, be the, the beauty, the gospel with our brothers and sisters out there. I hope that you remember, uh, continue to reflect on the beautiful example of the Samaritan woman. She went out and told everybody, come and see. Hope that we do the same. And also the beautiful example of St. Oscar Romero, who gave his life for God, for his faith. I hope that we have the same commitment to go out and really dedicate ourselves uh, to uh, share the beauty of God's love for, for each one of us and for all people uh, in our society. Uh, so let's keep praying for each other. You are in my prayers in a special way, and I ask for your prayers for my ministry here in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful and your kindness. Grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Children home.